company it up. Ladies and gentlemen, we continue our briefing with Pavlo Trelenko, the head of Donetsk Regional uh, Military Civilian Administration. Pavlo, in the last 24 hours, according to the official information, 28 settlements in the region have been shelled by the Russian occupiers. So what are the hottest points in the map of your region? Hi. All the front line, uh, throughout all the front line, there's shelling, day and night, in Marinka, in Krasnogorevka, Vuklidar, Avdivka, Toretsk, Veliko Novosilka, uh, also uh, in Volnovakharayan. So in the last 24 hours, uh, in Bakhmut, in Kostantinivka, Solidar, uh, there also have been air strikes, and they are quite remote. I mean, it was 20, 30 kilometers from the front line, which is considered um, a, a more distant from the front line settlement. So there, they destroyed three schools, one dormitory, and they have almost completely destroyed the Knauf factory it was an international investment project the canal factory which um, was producing construction material so the enemy is destroying the civilian infrastructure uh, n not only on the front line they are also conducting air strikes further from the front line so the school in avdivka uh, was uh, also shelled and we have heard reports that white phosphorus were, bombs were used for that can you explain the logic does it mean that the school was uh, a deliberate target of the occupiers what happened there well uh, they just want to destroy the infrastructure and to um, uh, so havoc and terror and the logic of the occupier is simple. They drop the um, bomb. They use uh, the old Soviet bombs, unguided bombs, uh, like uh, Fab 500. It's the Second World War type bomb, unguided. So it can hit uh, the target, or maybe it will not hit the target, like in Kramatorsk. Uh, there were many high rises. Uh, like on May 5th, this uh, FAP bomb it just uh, has hit uh, the high rise and the window was well sheltered, like the, the building was destroyed. It was an unguided bomb. They do use uh, phosphorus ammunition and uh, they are very difficult to put down because they uh, are incendiary, so they uh, cause fires. And even if the building is not destroyed by the explosion, then there's fire, uh, and the uh, firefighters are responding to this. But when there is constant shelling, it's very difficult to put down fires because um, the lives and safety of the firefighters are uh, the, are the priority. So sometimes the fires just keep on going. Also. They want to sow panic among the population because uh, these phosphorus munitions have uh, quite a big radius. Uh, uh, they hit uh, quite an area. And of course, people want these shellings to just stop. The enemy understands that uh, they can't sometimes take uh, the city easily, so they want um, to sow panic among the population, so the population would also uh, want uh, peace in any in any way. But we understand these tactics, so we are just uh, trying to organize evacuation of the population. It will be easier for us uh, to resist the occupiers. What are the news from Mariupol? Well, the leadership of the Ministry of uh, 
defense have given you the news i can't give any more details because uh, every ukrainian now has to be very uh, very sensitive uh, approaching this we don't want to hurt our defenders we will be uh, commenting all the procedure post factum after thank god they will um, return home this is about the azovstal but uh, Besides the situation in Azovstal and our defenders, what uh, do you hear about Mariupol in general? And what are the Russians doing there? They are trying to uh, to organize some sort of order there. But no, from 2019, I've been the head of the region. Uh, but it's not about me. I uh, understand very well how difficult it is to uh, make the biggest uh, city in the oblast, uh, modern uh, and contemporary. Not just painting the facades, but uh, building the internal things, setting up internal uh, communications. This is what the City Council of Mariupol has been doing, and the region, of course, invested a lot. Uh, we did this with joint efforts. So now, when everything is destroyed beyond repair, uh, the communications are also destroyed. Um, so it's not really easy to set up a gas supply, a power supply, when the whole grid is destroyed. So the occupier is, well, only making things worse now. Uh, the food security and potable water supply is still very, very complicated. The general staff of the Ukrainian army reported this morning that the enemy is now focusing um, with the offensive in uh, what's called Donetsk Ryan and Slavansk direction. Can you explain us what this means? Yes. Slavansk direction uh, is uh, where Donetsk region is bordering Kharkiv region. So indeed, they have this large-scale offensive in Donbas uh, from the north of the region. They uh, started near Dolgino. This is the entrance to Donetsk uh, Oblast uh, when you pass Izum. As soon as you leave Izum, there's the first roadblock of the Donetsk Oblast. But the actions uh, to defend the city and the bravery and the professionalism of the Ukrainian army, they have changed the plans of the occupiers. The plan was to act fast, to just go along the highway and to reach probably Slovensk. Well, I, I don't know what were the plans of the occupier, but to capture Slovensk and Kramatorsk, because these two cities are very um, near each other. As soon as the enemy understands that they can't um, come through because of the losses, and because of uh, the losses in troops and equipment, and the enemy started uh, attacking the Liman direction. So, trying to go around. The enemy is distributing the forces to the left and to the right uh, side. And now, there, uh, there's active combat. It's May 18th, so for about three weeks uh, there have been attacks in Liman direction. The Ukrainian army is controlling uh, the town of Liman, but the enemy is uh, really trying to attack. Uh, the enemy has captured Kremina and is uh, trying to attack Liman. So their plans are quite clear. So uh, we know uh, where they tried to cross the Siversky Donetsk River. And you know what was the outcome. Uh, all Ukraine saw, and uh, internationally in Europe, they saw um, the outcome of these attempts to cross the river. So we are ready uh, to defend uh, the north of the region. The Donetsk direction, that's Avdiivka. Today there were also attempts to break through. Our army is holding uh, its ground. And the enemy... 
uh, well, they just send in more troops. Uh, they just have a lot of troops and equipment, but well, we've been destroying them and we'll keep defending our homeland up until the moment when we uh, will be able to uh, to have counterattacks. And there's the south of the region. This is where the army have been showing heroism. I mean. I understand that uh, uh, it might be a superficial explanation, but I've seen the map and the events, uh, the front line, and I understand how uh, heroic are the defenders of Mariupol. The southern direction is essentially Mariupol, and the Russians wanted to uh, attack from the south, but Mariupol was the safeguard. And uh, what the defenders of Mariupol did, well, it changed the whole uh, campaign of the enemy. Uh, they had to withdraw some troops uh, there, uh, and they wanted to uh, redistribute the troops to um, send part to Zaporizhia and some to, to Kurakhova. And if the local population thinks that uh, well, all the combat activities are in Slovensk and Kramatos. There are rocket strikes and uh, there are air strikes from time to time. Yes, indeed, but uh, we can uh, hold in the north because of the professionalism of the Ukrainian army. The enemy has not uh, encircled those uh, cities. And this is how it is. My last question. We see how these grand battle for Donbass, uh, well, lowers the demands of the Russian occupiers. First, they plan to encircle all the east of Ukraine up until Zaporizhia and Dnipro. Then they started saying about the uh, administrative borders of Donetsk and Luhansk Oblast. Now, we see that they only focus on Slavyansk and Kramatorsk. Uh, there. So, what... Um, are the grounds for optimism for you when you're looking at this battle? My optimism, overall in my life, not only when there's the full-scale invasion, we all have to understand that in Donetsk this war has been uh, lasting from 2014, but my optimism, well, it follows uh, realism, it follows the realities. In this case, we have to see how the enemy is changing their plans. And while the uh, professionalism of the army uh, is uh, just pushing the enemy into changing their plans. So we have to increase the intensity of this resistance. Because it can't turn up into a frozen conflict. Uh, I can fully support the president, but the president says that we can't talk about freezing these conflicts because we've been holding strong. When people actually didn't believe this is possible, but we did and we have to liberate all the territory. We don't need uh, even an acre of uh, the territory of other states, especially the state uh, with which we only have a shared border. There's nothing else shared with them. And we will not have anything shared with them after this. But we have to liberate our territory, Ukrainian uh, territory. We have to rebuild it and make it modern, a modern European state. Pablo Kirilenko, the head of Donetsk uh, Military Regional Administration. Our next briefing is at one o'clock. We'll talk to the mayor of Mariupol, Vadim Thank you, Pablo.